Welcome to the breakdown where we break down all the messed up shit. Taiwan, here we are. First horror movie from Taiwan. The Sadness, or in Chinese, is Kube, directed by Rob Jabas, is heavily inspired by the Cross series. Literally, this movie could have been called Cross the Movie. It's about Jim and Kat trying to reunite with each other as a virus causes citizens to do the most disturbing things possible to the uninfected. The movie isn't available for purchase unless you live in Europe, but it is on Shudder right now. It just premiered a couple days ago. So this video is full on spoilers. This is a new movie that is available on Shudder right now. So if you want to wait and watch it yourself, feel free to skip this video. Otherwise, some of you like to watch these videos to get an idea before you watch it, or you just want to be entertained. Viewer discretion is advised. Lots of gore and mentions of SA and mass murdering. I don't know what will happen with this video. YouTube might take it down for community guidelines or copyright. So you better watch while you can. And I love y'all. So 1000 likes in an hour. I guess I can hit you with another double upload. Killing stalking. For your forehead. You are going to love this video. Um, let's get right into this movie. I'll give a recap and I'll talk about some thoughts. If you're expecting a boring Netflix recap with no tangents, click off. If you want to see what happens, including all the messed up parts, stay tuned for the breakdown. Kill the go high. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the scientific view of the coronavirus or whatever virus is present in this movie. It's kind of like the Sam Raimi Spider-Man movies when he got bit by the spider and they had to let us know biologically what was going on. We are in Taiwan. Oh, t oh looky here, Jim and Kat. Mm, I guess y'all cute. <laughs> Director, I get it. I'm single. Okay, you don't gotta like rub it in my face. So Jim always wakes up before the alarm goes off. I guess it's better to have a human alarm, I guess. She's got a busy day ahead of her, but this couple, they have a trip next week. One that he forgot all about. How the hell do you forget about vacation? Cause you didn't want to go on it, that's why. Yeah, that's my face too. You think vacation days grow on trees, buddy? You ugly. Guess what is going on while these two have communication problems? The Alvin virus is about to take over the planet. Jim watches a YouTube video of a doctor literally about to fart his brain out explaining the Alvin virus. This is how we were when the coronavirus started. I real deal thought the coronavirus pandemic would be done by the summer of 2020. Golly, it's been two years. Jim goes outside just chilling seeing a random old lady standing still with a nightgown full of blood. He screams out to her, Ni hao ma? That means, you good? <laughs> but she ain't good. When he turns away, this old lady is all gone. This is broke neck, nosy Mr. Lin. The way he thinks about the Alvin virus is similar to how a lot of people thought about the coronavirus. I'm not gonna go into that. <laughs> Let's just say he is probably the type to do his own research. Jim charges his phone on the way out. Dog, this is why you charge your phone while you are sleeping. Just hook it up while you're going to sleep. Who leaves home without their phone? While taking Kat to the subway so she can go to work, they see the police arresting some people. In fact, somebody's dead right there. That really bothered Kat to see. It would have bothered me too. All right, y'all cute, I guess, like move on. <laughs> she goes off to public transportation to work and Jim scooters back home. Those police officers abandon their vehicle. I love this everyday aspect we are seeing showing me everybody eating in this nice little place. Jim so happens to pick up an apartment advertisement in Taipei. As he is reading the advertisements, a random lady walks in. It's the old lady from the beginning with blood on her nightgown. She turns around and looks absolutely busted, spitting in this random guy's face and then slamming hot frying oil on the worker's face. She scratches his melting skin off as Jim watches in horror. She calls him 
handsome boy in the most masculine voice ever, when right behind her, the man who tried to help her is stabbing his friend to death. Luckily, the old lady gets ran over before she attacks Jim, but the driver of the car is crazy too, saying, that bitch came out of nowhere. Isn't this reminding you of the first issue of Cross? The main character in Cross was in a diner-like setting when somebody infected came in, infected the workers, and chaos collapsed just like this. Everybody is smiling, laughing. This lady jumps off a building to her death because why not? Jim starts bolting down the alley as he gets chased. He's sprinting through the city with a little funkin' soul. I appreciate his full on sprint as crazy infected chase him. He runs right back to his flat trying to drink his way out of this ugly nightmare. He turns on the TV and it's a national emergency on every channel. What the hell is this though? Taiwan Looney Tunes? Someone outside is using a very loud speakerphone. It's like a national warning system, but whoever is using the speakerphone is infected too. I say that because whoever is on that speaking phone is saying that all men will get their hot dogs cut off and all ladies will be molested by dogs in the street. Just like Cross, evil just for the sake of evil. He is texting Cat, worried about her, but Mr. Lin is sneaking in right behind him, splinter cell right behind him. Luckily, Jim notices the black eyed demon that took over his neighbor. He can speak just fine, but his speech is twisted and demented. He cuts off Jim's fingers with shears, and he starts chewing on that finger like it's woman's flesh, my red guts. This is what he says. <laughs> Mission pass. That's the kind of energy I like to see, Jim, but don't think it's over yet. Taiwan is overrun. All Jim can hear is evil laughter and ultimate despair. He peeks around the corner and sees some random infected bullying this random dude. Here's a bone breaking moment. You might not want to see this. Close your eyes now if you don't want to see it. They break his damn arm off. I'm sorry, buddy, but to be honest, anything with this face could be doing a lot worse to you. It's like everybody here is Green Goblin. He goes back to his scooter that was parked, carefully trying not to get the attention of these infected, quietly watching. But he fails, and they stare at him with the most twisted faces of all time. Luckily, he goes on his scooter and races through the street, chased by the infected. The infected can even use weapons accurately. Meanwhile, Cat is on her way to work on the train. Uh, Pops here gets a little nosy on the train. He's one of those types that think young people should get off those darn phones. He's asking her all kinds of questions, but I love her response. She says, Hell yeah! Ladies, be bold and truthful all day. Does he shut up? Nope. He keeps talking, saying he sees her very often. He flirts with her awkwardly. Mission abort. It's not working. It's time to move on. And then he touches her. Sir, you can't just go around touching people you don't know. She told your ass off already. Of course, he is bitter about it, acting like an incel, talking about women are all the same. I was just being nice. Women don't want the nice guy. Ted Bundy was nice. Jack the Ripper was probably nice. You see what I'm saying? If you were really nice, you shut up. It's a train ride to work. I'm trying to get to work. Ain't nobody feel like talking. And don't put your hands on me. He looked that one meme from that anime where it's like the guy's driving and then he realizes something. He looked just like that. Why this dude wearing sunglasses in the train? He's crying too, by the way. So this next scene is kind of like a mass murder kind of scene. A guy stabs various people on the train. Imagery might be kind of rough. So, you know, that's your warning. Soon, he pulls a blade and stabs another person in the back. He reacts in general pain and fear before getting stabbed again in the stomach. The serial stabber stabs more and more and then stabs this woman in her stomach. 
Ah oh, shit, this reminded me of Game of Thrones, Red Wedding. All people can do is react in horror, seeing a crazy person stab people. This is true horror. Blood is all over the floor, and the person scares people, trying to stab more and more. He's one of the infected, and eventually gets tackled. He asks, did he break the record? Did I break the record? Now, something like this happened in August back in 2021 in Tokyo. A man stabbed eight people in the train. I'd probably be in therapy if I saw something like this. Well, they got him, and people record it for some reason, but suddenly, Another random pedestrian starts stabbing this woman too. Eventually, everybody goes infected. People start biting necks and ankles, not because they are hungry, but because they want to cause pain for no reason. This lady wanted help from Cat. She's confronted by the businessman and will be stabbed in the eye with an umbrella. That's your content warning. Now let's get to the actual scene. Look at that umbrella go right in her eye. I haven't seen umbrella violence since the another anime. It's pure hell in this train, pure ultimate despair in this rawest form. These infected start to sexually assault people on the train for no reason. This dude has a fatal encounter that looks like something out of Game of Thrones. Finally, the door to the train opens. Luckily, Cat lives uninjured and saves the other passenger, missing an eye. Cat leaves her phone on a seat, and the text from Jim reads, Don't come back. I'll come to you. Look at all this bloodshed. This despair. She got her titty all out, but look how evil she is. This is Cross, the movie. Remember the businessman? Because he plans on sticking some more eyes out. Cat and that injured girl run out of there, crashing in the hallway. Cat is pretty nice for not leaving her behind, even when the girl says, leave me behind. Her name is Molly, and they plan on trekking to the hospital before this crazy bastard gets a hold of them. As they run away, they run into this guy. He's like, damn, bitch, what are you, blind? Oh shit, you are blind! <laughs> <laughs> right, a good work. That's my kind of humor. This is the guy who wants to kill them. He catches that swinging umbrella with swag, only to get grabbed and have his nose bitten off by the businessman. Dude, you built like a triad, but you went out like that? He breaks through a fire panel to get an axe, and as the fake triad is screaming in pain, he gets axed all over the room. Dude, how you gonna go out like that? As they are escaping, they scream for this random passerby. Who is that? James Corden? Makes sense. The chasing infected businessman says, <laughs> The ladies metal gear out of that subway, and Cat verbally assaults James Corden for running like a coward when they needed help. He even gets cracked right in the nose. Damn! anything to get away from that walking virus. So far, I'm loving this way better than Ebola syndrome, by the way. Back with Jim, he is cruising through the area like Rick Grimes in the beginning of The Walking Dead, taking notice of the evil that is happening around him. The horror of civil unrest that has been unheard of for all of human history. These people are all gored. This video, not monetized. Dude, Earth is fucked. <laughs> I guess we deserve it. The way we all handled the coronavirus lets me know that if this cross stuff happened, we're fucked. Easy, hands down. See Baldy here? He just got done sexually assaulting a corpse. I feel like I seen an African actor with this same shaped head. I'm thinking about Jamon Hanso? He springs after Jim in the most hilarious screen ever. Jim keeps on scootering out of the area, passing through the city with a little funkin' soul. Damn, bro, look at your hand! Now, Cat hasn't reached back to him yet, and I'd be so afraid if I were him. Luckily, he grabs a sickle out of a nearby wood, ready to bring the fight to any infected who wants to smoke! He hears something in the foreground. He starts splinter selling to a nearby court, seeing a bunch of baseball kids beating and torturing a man to death. These kids are clearly infected. They pick this man up and slam his genitals into the barbed wire. 
Suddenly, Jim Sparta kicks right in this dude's chest. Bam! That was a hard ass kick. This dude right here, he starts showing off like Jet Li. He's like, I'm you law. I'm nobody's bitch. Y'all don't know where that movie's from. Y'all don't know about that. Yeah, right. Dude gets completely yeeted like a soccer ball. His head kind of look like one too. Big baseball head ass. Jim's combat prowess forces the infected kids to run away. And luckily, this man is still alive. Jim cuts his binds off, seeing a severely beaten and tortured guy. But randomly, the guy grabs Jim, saying this. Ew, get the fuck away from me. Even the baseball brats come back and enforces Jim to ditch the area on his handy dandy scooter. At the hospital, y'all are all about to die painfully. Cat and Molly are inside. See how the nurse checks his Molly's temperature? The hospital had it hard. Apparently, a doctor just lit a little girl on fire. James Corden over here all mad that he can't get the patient treatment. I have a feeling that Molly is a very anxious person even before this whole pandemic. She thanks Kat for getting her out of that train station. That's very commendable, Kat. You are the exact opposite of Haywan from the devil. Fuck Haywan! Kat asks to use his phone to call Jim, right? Breasts. <laughs> Dude, it's 2D breasts. Finally, the warning message goes off and the Taiwanese government give a warning. Would you believe it's only 11 a.m. in the morning? The government say that literal hell has breaking loose. Cat is trying to sign into the Line app. Basically, it's like signing into Google so you can see your contacts. I love how Cat just demands and gets the respect she deserves. The president of Taiwan speaks his message, apologizing to the nation and doing all the addressing stuff any president does. He talks about the Alvin virus causing all of this, saying that this is the biggest challenge in the history of the country. 4.5 million are infected. The military commander speaking seems to be infected himself, grabbing the president and then shoving a grenade in his mouth. The whole nation just watched the president's head explode. Cat, please beat this dude's ass. I know you good at kicking. Unfortunately, the businessman has made his way to the hospital, smiling at Cat, who he came to see. Cat escapes out of there with the phone, allowing the businessman to attack everybody inside the lobby. The businessman crawls through the building seeing Molly just chilling. I already know this scene is gonna be extremely unnecessarily disturbing. Here's your content warning. He's gonna be sexually assaulting her eye socket. I don't like stuff like that. I didn't like it in Human Centipede 3 or Tumbling Doll of Flesh, and I don't like it here. This movie is the definition of disturbing a breakdown. Using James Corden's phone, she texts Jim saying she's at the NTU hospital. Finally, the couple get to communicate after the earth turns upside down. Y'all are both lucky to even be alive and uninfected. While she's talking, Jim notices a disgusting corpse in the water. He also seems to cry another sign of infection. I do find that he is unusually calm during all of this. I would have been crying and all of that mad, especially if I see hopelessness like this. Downstairs at the hospital, all you can hear are sexual moaning. James Corden looks around the corner, seeing a bloody, disgusting orgy that I cannot show at all but it is very explicit. All they have to do is show male genitalia and it would be porn. James sneaks right past them. He later finds Molly chewing on a corpse. She's infected now and she's about done eating the brains of this victim. She grabs a surgical saw and is ready to commit murder. All the infected sneak in and grab James Corden and they are all ready to slash apart. He gets the kiss of death, having his innards spread all over the damn room. Meanwhile, Kat is chilling on the stairs, but the infected come in. She locks the door, but the businessman crawls through, saying he won't stop until he Fs her to death. The businessman purposefully locks the other infected outside, saying that Kat is all his. Kat finally blinds him with the fire extinguisher before crushing his skull with it. 
He looks her in the eye saying she is just like him, violent and depraved. Then she gives him the irreversible treatment and smashes his brains to mere pieces on the floor. Just as the other infected break through, a random door, Dexter's laboratory ass door opens on the side. It belongs to, guess what, a doctor who is trying to find a cure. I mean, you had to expect this. He forces her to move to the shower and handcuffs her at gunpoint, his infected test. Honestly, sir, just kill me now. This earth basically fucked. Well, she does what he says, cuffing herself to the shower. He postures that she might be immune. Another cliche in the pot, huh? She's covered in infected blood, so honestly, it might be possible. This is Dr. Wong, and he has taken refuge in the maternity ward. While she is getting a chemical shower, Jim has finally made his way to the hospital but I feel like the infection has taken hold of him. Dr. Wong has been warning the world about this virus for a year, saying it would mutate, but blames politicians for creating distrust in doctors, especially since the election is close by. Let's not get too realistic here, let's stick to the movie. <laughs> Anyway, he says the virus affects the limbic system, affecting the areas of the brain that regulate aggression and sexual drive. He believes that this virus is natural, that it would have happened anyway. He believes humans are slaves to their limbic systems and figures that the reason that crying is a symptom of the virus is because the infected are aware of their dangerous and disgusting deeds but are unable to resist. It's similar to telling someone to stop blinking. Blinking is natural and involuntary. I just blink right now! For the infected to be satisfied, their victims must suffer. This is all just like Cross, but I really like this little nerd monologue he is having. It creates this kind of academic fear of the infected. Anyway, Cat is ready to do blood tests but hears disgusting noises in a trash can. She finds an infected baby and is tricked and ejected with infected blood from that baby. Now, if she is not immune, she should be infected within five minutes. Guess I don't blame him, but her blood could save the world, I suppose. She tries calling Jim, but that guy's phone is locked. Not to mention anime titties all on his phone. I love that kind of silent humor, by the way. Dr. Wong put all the babies in his maternity ward out of their misery, saying that if the infected got in here, they would have assaulted them before cannibalizing them. We saw that in Cross um, Family Values, by the way. That exact scene happened. He wonders if what he is doing is the right thing. Honestly, you're doing the best you can do. Whoa, <laughs> big brain. Like you got me head ass girl. Cat just used detective mode and breathed on the phone, discovering the smudge marks that lead to the most likely pattern that could unlock the phone. Big brain head ass. While Dr. Wong is waiting to see if Cat is infected, he is also waiting on a ride from the government who will land on the top of the roof of the hospital. It seems that she isn't infected even after five minutes. We've seen people earlier in the movie get infected within seconds of contact with the virus. The two infected who snuck in surprised the doctor and cut his foot off with the ax. He shoots the infected, but the other one vomits all over his foot, infecting him as well. Still, they shoot the last infected and the doctor forces her to take him to the roof so that there is a possibility of her being saved by the government to develop a cure. As they walk to the roof, Jim surprises them. One look at his face and he'll tell you all you need to know. Jim is about to kill both of them and surprisingly says the most PG stuff out of any infected in this movie. The doctor's gun malfunctions. It was a 3D printed gun after all. This allows Jim to stab him in the neck with a sickle. As he dies, he mentions that he enjoys killing all of those babies in the maternity ward. This was the virus getting a hold of him. Just like Cross, I'm left wondering if these are just a virus saying these things, or if these are hidden dark thoughts deep within the doctor's head. 
Cat locks Jim behind the gate, calming him down, and she asks him how he feels being infected. He says he feels wonderful. He feels like he finally has a purpose in life. His purpose is her now, saying that when he heard her voice on the phone earlier, her cries for help, he knew he had to find her. He had to be with her so that he could cut her tits off. He's gone now, Kat. She listens to him, telling her exactly what he will do to her. And her mind finally breaks. It's only 12 p.m. by the way, what a horrible day. She goes from crying to laughter, drooling like some kind of infected. Just like the businessman said, she runs towards the roof as the military land on the hospital. We see Jim's twisted infected face and gunfire in the background. Cat was killed off screen and the movie ends with this twisted fuck heavy metal music playing as the credits roll. Hey guys, this is a photo sensitivity warning. This ending animation might trigger seizures for, for people with epilepsy. Turn away now just to not view this. Okay, for people that this will be safe for, this is the closing animation for The Sadness. This movie is the definition of disturbing breakdown. This was excellent, it was new, and it was just awesome to watch. So now that we've gotten through this, let's talk about the most disturbing moment and most enjoyed moment in The Sadness. I really liked the daily aspect before everything turned upside down. One interesting thing for me was how crying was a symptom because it reflected how the infected were powerless to fight against the urges of the virus, but still felt awful about what they were doing. That kind of plot point is in The Last of Us, with the infected literally crying sometimes because they're unable to fight the infection. But some infected didn't cry at all. Did you notice that? In a twisted way, it kind of says that the, some of the infected didn't feel bad about what they were doing. That's scary because it means human beings hide awful thoughts or zero inhibitions before they were infected. Or that given the chance, human beings won't feel bad about anything if they are allowed to take advantage of others. The virus freed some people, but the ones crying were imprisoned. Probably the best quote I've ever said. Most disturbed moment is tough. Me personally, I was bothered by the train stabbing even though it was over the top. I loathe any kind of mass murder scene and that scene, it kind of reminded me of the kind of bullshit we have to go through today. However, the businessman assaulting the eye socket was awful. I told y'all I don't like no wound penetration stuff. It's truly evil to me. Most enjoyed moment, other than me simping over a cat for being altruistic and bold, is probably the ending Loki, and not because it was bleak. It was just a good ending. She probably died, and he just looks like that for the camera. I like it for what it was. I do think Kat could have been immune though, but I don't know if a cure is gonna fix all this. So this video has gotten pretty long. This might be one of my longest videos ever. I really like this movie. It was the funnest watch of this year. If you like gore and just twisted fuckery, you'll love this movie. Now guys, I, I, I really gotta end this video. This script is eight pages long. I hope you enjoyed this video, and if you did, click the like button and subscribe to see more messed up stuff. Click the following videos to see some similar stories to this. Thanks for watching. Spooky out.